guys, we are live in the Insiders today. I've got the lovely chef Lee here who is going to do a cook cooking demo for us. I'm just gonna waffle for a couple of minutes until we get more people on live. Is anybody on live yet, Maya? No, <laughs> so I'll keep talking. We are going to do a cooking demo today for a simple seitan steak recipe. I am not gonna be doing the cooking. You do not want me to cook for you, but hopefully after this, I will be able to cook because Lee is gonna teach us how. Yeah, yeah. Lee has been a chef for how many years? 21, 22. And how many years with Kim? Now? Kim, two and a half. Two and a half years. Yeah, so hold on well. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing all right. Yeah, <laughs> and you have really completely changed your way of cooking because Completely. you're now vegan. Ah, well, you keep the basics and you know that the, the, the grounds of it, so you, you just have to change it with the side hand stuff. So it was a it was a learning process there, but no, it's, I'm always open to good ideas and new ideas. Yeah, I'm just it. gonna pin us while I multitask here. So Lee is behind many of our amazing creations in the meal plans, and this idea for the live came about because I made a confession last week to Kim, where I admitted that even though we have seitan chicken, seitan steaks, all these amazing seitan recipes that um, Lee has created and with great detail of method. <laughs> Could you made it any easier? No. <laughs> I have no excuses. I can't even say I don't know how to make seitan. I know how to. I have bought all of the ingredients, which I did last year by the best intentions, um, but I've now discovered our out of date on March 2022 because they have sat there that long and I've just made all the excuses of the day to not try and make seitan. <laughs> so Kim was, you need Lee's help and Chef Lee is to the recipe today to make the simplest recipe possible. Mm -hmm. How did you find making seitan? Because it was quite new to you. When I, when I first started, I have to say, like it was a wee bit dull. I was like, oh, what, what way is it? And it's it can be tricky. But this one is so simple. I've made it so simple for you guys. Honestly, it's foolproof. But as I say, when I talk you through it, You'll, you'll see yourselves, it's as easy as just adding a few ingredients. Then you can play with the ingredients yourself, so you can. You can actually play with the ingredients, play with the spices, the herbs, and then the words your oyster is it's <laughs> Ah, uh, totally. So we've got people on live now, which is amazing. Um, some of our members have asked questions on the infographic, so I will throw them to Lee as we go along. Mm -hmm. Please ask questions on the live as well, and we will get to them, and I will add the ingredients to this post later so that you can literally cook along with Lee at any time when you want to. If I can do it after this, <laughs> you're going to be able to do it too. She will. I will. I will. I will. I have to try. And I'm going to try the recipe. I will share my progress <laughs> in the group. And I want you to do the same. So after this recipe, um, you, you have it to keep forever. Please try it. Do post it in the group. Tag me in it. Tag the coaches in it so we can see it. And if you need any more um, tips, I can ask Lee for them as well. So we are going to get started. I will keep an eye on the video. Any questions that come up, I will fire them to Lee. Uh, Kim saying, no, no trick one. <laughs> Kim's on. Kim says, looking good, Lee. Nice haircut. Thank you very much. <laughs> so Lee's got a special haircut just, <laughs> just for everybody on this live. I brushed my hair today and put some makeup on, so he's definitely made more effort than me. But I'm going to give it over to Lee and um, to get you started. For the guys, so we're going to get started. As I say, keep it simple. So the way I would start it now is just getting the heat going. So I have my own wee steaming uh, basket over here. So this is my wee makeshift one. If you have one at home, which is like this, works just the same, easy enough. Can I ask what heat you put it to? So I just put that to high. Okay. You want that bubbling, you want it basically the highest temperature. Yeah. But once it goes to the boiling, just turn it right down, but I'll show you that. I have a steamer at home. Can yeah, I use same that thing, well? same thing. Yeah. As I say, just layer them up. I just find me using this and I've been using it for quite a while. It's, it, I can, it, there's a bit more play in it. I can touch the side hand and mm -hmm. just basically know where I am with it. But now I've been doing it for so long, it's, I don't even have to touch yeah. it. But as I say, I've been doing it for quite a while, so. How many, how many steaks will the recipe make? This will make four. So that, that's a good size of Yeah, yeah, for perfect. That. But as I say, if you've got one of these at home, so you can put two at the top and then two at the bottom. Easy enough. As I say, just put it to boil first. And how much water would you suggest having in that? How much is that? Just enough so it doesn't run down. Okay. So use your initiative and just have it where I have it halfway here. Uh, they usually take about 25 minutes. Sometimes it can vary, it can play with you a wee bit. 
uh, as I say, so just so it doesn't run down. You don't want to boil and dry. Awesome. Yeah. Right? Right, so we're just over the next week part here, guys. Right, so sorry, just right to see right? Right, so as I say, kept this nice and simple. I was going to weigh out all the ingredients for you, but well, most of them. But as I say, because it's, it's so easy, I just thought I'll have it all sitting here and she's the exact way I do it. Instead of just having a couple of wee bones and it's like pop, pop, pop. But it is that easy, guys. Right, so start off with the liquids. So this is two tablespoons of light soy sauce. This is garlic granules. Is garlic granules the same as garlic powder? Are they different yeah, things? Yeah, just the only one you need to watch out for is garlic salt. It's garlic salt. Because there's, there's a bit of sodium in this. Okay. But as I say, guys, your sodium, you can do this recipe and you can cut the sodium down. So you don't want to use garlic salt? No, okay. definitely not. Not in this recipe because this recipe I have the seasoning to a tea. Yeah, and is this, do you need to have a food processor or can you mix it in any other so way? So food processor, this is the best way I think to do it because the legs of the Vita mixer, it's all the liquid bees at the bottom. Once you put the Vita wheat gluten in, it's hard for it to mm -hmm. combine. But you can use this if you have a Nutri-Pilot at home. Do exactly as I do, put all the liquids in first. Then add the side, or sorry, the vital wheat gluten mm -hmm. to the bowl, and then make the side hand from there. Yeah. It's just a wee bit of kneading. It's quite It's actually quite easy. So it is. So that's the garlic, end, guys. This is cumin. How much of the cumin? Are you quarter in? quarter teaspoon. Cool. Nope. One teaspoon of. Oh, I'm not that person. <laughs> One teaspoon of paprika. As I say, I could do this all by eye, guys, but yeah. that's just me because I've been doing it so long. Uh, half teaspoon of liquid smoke. That, be careful with it, guys, because you use too much of that. It's quite pronounced. You'll, you'll taste it. Like, okay. So be very careful with that. Where can you get liquid smoke? Just no, in the supermarket? Yeah, supermarket, but if you can get it in the supermarket, Amazon. Amazon, Amazon, Amazon yeah. will most things, but as I say, very weak gluten, you can't get that in the in the supermarket, so we'll always source that somewhere else. And is liquid smoke, is that like specific flavouring, like a it's steaky smoky, kind of? It's smoky, it's, it's the flavour you get off a barbecue, okay. but only in a liquid. Yeah. That, that's why you have to be careful with it, because it's quite strong. Mm -hmm. And you can get it in different variants of flavours. And how, so how much was that that you put in again? Uh, I, I, I think it was a quarter teaspoon, okay. yeah, or a half teaspoon, sorry. Half guys. teaspoon. <laughs> yeah, so three quarters cup of the lentils. 80 grams of tomato puree. Can I ask you, I'm going to ask you all the questions I know you I remember to ask. What colour of lentils, <laughs> what type of lentils was Holy that? lentils, green lentils, if you have nothing else in a cupboard, yeah. red lentils will do. Yeah. As long as they're, they're cooked. Okay, so they cooked make, lentils. They have to be cooked tins based. Yeah. As I say, so you're making set tan, it's all right. But if you cook your lentils the day before or yeah. the morning before, just as good. Yeah, and we will put the ingredients list and the recipe um, up after connected with the video. Mm -hmm. So that's that. So this is better than bouillon beef stock. So this is just a half cup, guys. As I say, if you don't want as much sodium, just use water because you've got the soy sauce in there, then I'm going to be seasoning at the end. Mm -hmm. So I am, so as I say, just be careful. And as, if you want less salt, just use less stock. And this is, so vegetarian, better than bullion? Beef. Uh, beef, beef one. And is that again on, online? It's quite hard to get Maya be able to actually help me with that one. Amazon. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Maya gets it, keeps it stocked up yeah. then. As you say, just by eye, guys. Just, if you want more pepper, more pepper. If you want less, less. But that's about, I'd say about a teaspoon of pepper. But I have a member asking, can you use the canned lentils? Exactly, canned, yeah. that's, that's what I've used. Brilliant. Yeah, just as long as they're fully cooked. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. All right, so that's your wet ingredients, guys. So what I do is I just hold that until it's all combined. And as you see, that's it. It's completely combined already. Right? So just rather than like even for a certain length of time, just go, go, go yeah, by look? Just, just go by look. You'll see it just a wee bit, wee bit grainy there. I like it because it gives a wee bit more texture to a steak because the steak is all about texture. Yeah. So, it, like Kim, Kim likes to bite the lentils and yes. see the lentils sometimes. So I would keep it, I would just pulse it lightly. But if you want to puree it a wee bit more, if you don't want the lentils yeah. too much, like too grainy, yeah. just pulse it a wee bit will more. It affect, will it affect the mixture? If so, so say I made it and I 
cured it for too long and it went very watery would that be like a, a, for everything. okay that's okay. it's 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 all the seed of it'll be fine so it will and as i say if you're doing this in the vita mixer that's it guys pulse that and put it in a bigger bowl mm -hmm. and then add your vital wheat gluten okay. and then you just mix it with a wooden spoon and combine it but don't overwork it because then you end up with a tough steak okay and nobody likes a tough steak that is a really common issue of our members it's like that knowing what's the texture just don't overdo that. it it's, it's hard to say guys but it's quite like play-doh mm -hmm. it's so nice and spongy but you don't want it springing back okay. you? if you see it springing back you've overdid it yeah so you don't want to do that cool we'll see that in, in the, in the <clears throat> excuse me so so that's it now so then i basically just add the vital wheat gluten how much was that if you remember <clears throat> that was one cup and three quarters okay yeah, yeah. so that's it then and what I do now, and honestly, guys, obviously, when you're counting your macros and you want to be precise, then don't add and take away because obviously your macros are going to change. But with this, and you're not counting your macros, just if it's too wet, just add a wee bit more vital wheat gluten, or if it's too dry, just add a wee bit more water. Easy enough. Yeah. So, as you see, guys, it's starting to resemble like fine breadcrumbs. You want that to come together come together to an extent where not too much. See, you see it starting to come together now? Yeah, what would you mean? So what, what would be so too you, much? So what do we want so, to look for? So and when what you, do we when not you, want them to have? Sorry, when you blitz that, mm -hmm. you'll see it breadcrumbs, then you'll see it starting to clump together. When you see it starting to clump together, that's you working on. Take it out, that's the process done. Okay. And then I just put it on, sorry. I remember Lucy's asked, is it a bit like the texture of the Beyond Brown honey? Is that like no, texture wise no, to go that's, for it? No, that's, that's a pea protein, okay. so it's a completely different texture to it. It's a bit more tender and has a completely different flavour. I'm guessing by the texture sheet, that's quite stuck together. Does this feel a bit more work workable? That this is more workable, so you see guys, look, my fingers are going in mm. and it's not bouncing back at me ah. too much. So fingers are going in. And it's nice, it's firm, but is, not too firm. Is that like a test <clears throat> our members could do? Like yes, this, like yes. the finger bounce back test? <laughs> I don't know what yeah, I mean that. Yeah, you just get on with yourself, perfect. <laughs> but that is just something they find, they just, it's nearly like they, they cook it and then they nearly realise too late, but it's not the texture that they wanted. This would be quite a good thing to do. It's, it's, a, learn, it's a learning process. So yeah. the, the first time you do it, it's not going to be like the second time you get better and better yeah. just like myself. Yeah. And as I say, you see that guys, there wasn't much work in that. It's not a dough. You're not making bread, so don't overneat it. You're not working the gluten out. It doesn't need done in this process. Yeah. So that's it there. So you just want to just send me a nice wee ball. And basically, I just cut that in the four. That's so easy. So easy. <laughs> that's your side hand, guys. That's it. You can work with that. You can sorry off mushrooms and onions, and you can add it. And even with that recipe, just add a wee bit more vital wheat gluten and then you've got nice mushrooms and uh, onions in your steak. And the good thing about mushrooms, mushrooms are actually quite meaty and take on a mushroom flavour. And with the cumin, that works perfect. I think, what so the reason we include vital wheat gluten and, and seitan in so many of our meal plans, is just a really, really high, 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 not so, vegan, high protein um, food source, which is also really low in fat and carbs, which is perfect for shredding. And I have known that, but for some reason I've just got really overwhelmed by the process. But it, you have just made that so simple. Simplified. It's so easy. So easy. Guys. And yeah. I do just think it is. It can be complex. It can get a wee bit strange at times. If I'm doing a beef wellington mm -hmm. for Kim and the kids and the family, it, it can because you have to be careful. And then there's different uh, ingredients you can add. Excuse me, like beetroot and things like that. So when you slice it in there, it has nice, like a nice blushing colour. Yeah. No light as you would with the yeah. steak. So it can get a wee bit more complicated, yeah. but this is the simplest one for um, us. Well, one of the members, when I confessed, confessed yesterday to never making seitan before, and I've just been buying like shop, um, shop made products. She was like, oh my gosh, I'm sure it's cost you a for fortune. I'm like, yes, because this is so, you know, money's, money's so tight at the moment, like life is mm -hmm. so expensive, so it's a great way to, to save money as well. This, to get involved the, in the you're ingredients. basically buying the flour, the value of gluten. Once you buy, bought that, that's the most expensive. And out of a bag, you get quite a lot. Mm -hmm. So as I say, herbs and spices, most people have those things at home. Yeah. And it's sitting in your cupboard. You go and buy a steak or you buy a burger, it's it's three, four pounds. Don't yeah. know that is in dollars, but <laughs> as I say. Eight, nine dollars, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. so as I say, you're saving money then. 
what if the person, so what if, what if a member or myself did the bounce back test <laughs> and it had, like, went wrong? Could they fix it? Could they put it back in the blender? Was no. there anything you could If, if it bounces back, then you've overworked it too much already. Yeah. It's hard to bring it back. Okay. It's a bit like salt you can add, but you yeah. can't take away. Yeah. But at least you can you haven't went too far in the process. No, no, yeah. no. And as I say, the first time you do it, it won't be the way you want it. it, it with this one, you shouldn't go wrong. But as I say, the, the next time you do it, you get better and better and you pulse it less yeah. and then you get the texture yeah. and the consistency that you want. And as I say, that's when you get a wee bit more like uh, creative mm -hmm. and start adding flavours and herbs and yeah. spices and things. Oh no, so easy. Yeah. So, okay. so as I say, I'm just patting that out and just turning that into a steak. A lot of people with oil these, but I don't see the point. As I say, it just adds more calories. Mm -hmm. So, so... That just looks like a steak, and then I just work it down a little bit, and then make sure it's wrap each one up. In yep, it. Make, yeah, make make sure it's completely like enclosed because a lot of times it would what would happen is if it's open and you're steaming it, the water gets in and then it becomes soggy and mm -hmm. it actually dilutes the flavor. Okay. So you're locking in the flavor here. Um, I remember it asked earlier, just coming back to the baking tray, is that like a special, is that a baking tray just with a wrap on it? That's actually yeah. just a roasting base that I do the likes of the roast potatoes and things like that in, in Kim's house. That's yes. just a roasting base and then with the wire rack on top, I just find I've used that there from the start so it's something that I'm comfortable with. Yeah, Kim says, Lee is so cal calorie conscious now after working with me for so Always long. Kim, <laughs> always boss. <laughs> Uh, so this is the third stick, and I'd say you want it to look like a stick, it doesn't have to be perfect, yeah. just as long as you get each thickness around the same, because you don't want one taking longer than the other, you know? That's the third one, and then last and least. See, this is why I don't overwork a table, because you're still working it, pattying it out, yeah. and shaping it. I've had your, your steaks when I was shredding for my photo shoot before Christmas. True. So I, I ate like a queen. <laughs> because, like Kim? But, but like Kim, because Kim very kindly um, asked Lee to make me four weeks of meal prep. And I, I know I was shredding and that was hard, but I was just living my best life because I got my lunches and my dinners of just this delicious vegan food. And it was the easiest, hardest shred I've ever done because shredding can be hard, but just the meal plans that... Um, and the food that Lee creates of like the high protein food, which is so filling and so delicious, and then all the green cruciferous vegetables, it just it just makes the process so much easier. Mm -hmm. So I really and just like this, so much easier. So much but easier. next process, guys, is just over here. So as you see, this is up to a boil now. So I just layer these in, and as I said, you're using these two sticks and then two sticks. We have had that on about. 20 minutes that's, now, probably to boil it to come that, to boil. That's, that's been boiling for quite a while now. Yeah. As I say, I was getting worried about it standing oh. top of the there, but it's all right, the water's still there, so turn it down. What you don't want to do is put these in and tin foil it and then get the boiling up because then you're playing with the times, you're playing with the temperature. Bring it to boil first, put the steaks in, and then obviously you mix it. Can you turn it off or just turn it down to low? Turn it down to low. Hide, hide low. Low, right. Yeah. So this takes about 20 to 25 minutes. It can always vary. It's like anything, uh, but I always turn it halfway. Okay. But listen guys, that's it. So halfway, I'll turn it, and basically that'll be your steak. Yeah. If I was using the steamer, so would that be the same thing on high, on like high, 20 minutes to get warmed on up? On high, bring up it up to boil. To low. Once it's on a boil, turn it down to low, add your steaks, and then steam. Yeah. But as I say, I'll check that halfway and turn them. It, the consistency of it's quite strange because it's satan, it's not mm -hmm. like something I've ever worked with before. As I say, whenever you're touching it, it'll become, what's a, what way could you say? So whenever it's fully cooked, you can tell, it, when you break it, or sorry, you lift it up, it yeah. breaks like meat. It's quite strange because yes. it's not, it actually breaks like meat. But if it's not breaking like meat, and you can see there's a bit of resistance, and it's a bit like uh, doughy, just put it back on, give it another five minutes. There's no harm in overcooking it. When are you, are you turning the steaks at halfway? Halfway. But don't open them up. Just keep keep keep. No, them no. Well, you have to check. Sometimes, whenever I 
was starting to do them, I would have checked them every now and again just to be just to be careful. But now I can do them no problem well, at all. Would you them. be looking for it halfway to sort of half cooked? Half cooked, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but as I say, no, if you turn them over and you feel them, they'll be fine. Okay. As long as you know, and that's what I'm saying. If if it's if it's like if it's like raw dough, like a like bread or anything mm -hmm. like that, it's hard to tell with bread. But as I say, if it's like a dough, it's that's you don't want that, you want it fully cooked. But they'll never be fully cooked within fifteen minutes. 12 to 15 minutes that is around halfway and if you're using so i so i have one of the plastic steamers mm -hmm. and would oh. you <laughs> i think it's just a vegetable steamer a plastic steamer <laughs> yeah. a plastic steamer for well it's for vegetables but it was on the heat yeah you know, it's like a little you turn like a little timer on it so oh. i just disgusted the chef as well right. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> never seen one before. I've never used one before. I'm very. I'm amateur. Like, I'm the worst cook in the company. <laughs> Could I cook Brilliant. it in that, or do I need to get a steamer like that? Uh, I've never done it. No, okay. I don't. I don't want to say yes in case yes. it's crap. And you go, Leo. Yes. I, I didn't really like that. It didn't work for me. This works. Don't try fix that. it. Don't fix it if it's not broken. Yeah, I'll try that. So I just so. So me, so I need to now get, well I probably, be, so I just have to use any baking tray and just a wire wrap on top oh, of it. Yeah, yeah any, most people will have these yeah. at home in the cupboards. Yeah. Easy enough. <laughs> bit, of, bit, of, bit of tin foil. <laughs> Kim's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> and I do admit this, I am your girl for exercises, like every variation of exercises under the sun. When it comes to cooking, I would just, I just slap food on the dish. Down the hatch. <laughs> I don't seize it. I don't do anything. Get it, get it done. Just get it in, in. Just get it yeah. in and get it done. But like my kids. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, with the metal steamer, do you still put them in in the tin foil? In, in yeah, that yeah, oh, exactly yeah, the same process. Yes. Just this. Yes. Is what I use. Yes. As I say, simplified. You could do it now, but just I just prefer this. This is just something that I. Yeah, have. Kim said. I know what steamer you're talking about, and it would work okay. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so how long are, are we? So Leah's got some, but he's prepared earlier. Yeah, but so gonna look just like I say, here's one I made earlier. <laughs> how long? Be, how long is this getting left on for now? This, this day? So I just set. Usually I set a timer, but yeah. I just looked at the clock mm -hmm. while I was cooking it, so I know what time that'll be cooked for. So, I turn that in about five minutes, yeah. and then another twelve minutes that'll be for the. So it's about twenty-five minutes, is yeah, it? Yeah, twenty-five minutes to thirty okay. minutes for you. So check about 10, 15 minutes. Yes, yeah. okay. yes. And what else was I going to say? So whenever you're cooking this and you're doing this the order, that's going to be warm, and then you're doing the next process. This one's cold, so mm -hmm. this will be. Here's one I made earlier, but yeah. this will take a wee bit more cooking. Okay. Yeah. But as I say, whenever that comes off, that's going to be like really hot inside and the steam is going to be flying off it. And then you're going to be cooking it. But the next day, if you're cooking it from the fridge or taking it out, just like a steak, take it out so it's not stone cold. Yeah. And then exactly the same process. So these are cold ones we're going to look at. Mm -hmm. There's a show I made earlier. Okay, so, so these are these. So do you season them after they're so, cold or let them cool? So I'm going to show you how to do it now. Yeah. Basically, this is how you would do a traditional okay. steak. Okay. And it's called basting. So you're basting ah. with flavour. So you are. And as I say, so if you like, if you look at this, you you break that open. It, it's like it's like a meaty. Mm -hmm. So that's what you want there. If you see it's doughy, mm -hmm. don't. Okay. Put it back in and let it cook. What what yeah. does doughy doughy look like to you? If you describe it, like melting cheese, but only firmer. Mm -hmm. uh, so here we go. So this is just a pan on high heat. Sorry, guys. We'll just twist and turn here, and then about a tablespoon of olive oil. As I say, if you're if you're if you're wanting less calories, a half teaspoon should do. Can you use any other? Sorry, a teaspoon. Any other oil, or is olive oil the best? You can use with olive oil. I cook mainly with olive yeah. oil. It's just healthier. But okay. You could use any other oils, but obviously. The, the calories will change with that. Can we cook it without any oil or does it need oil? Uh, well, it's it, the way I'm showing you it here, it's oil and uh, vegan butter. Yes. But this is just showing you how to get the best flavour out of it. As I say, if you even want, you can put it on a tray and just like lightly uh, brush them with mm -hmm. oil, salt and pepper with the rosemary and thyme and bake it in the oven. Mm -hmm. It would do the same job, okay. but just a wee bit less time cooking. Yeah. But as I say, so you want this coming up the temperature, this is an, as is Kim's Aga, so this is actually quite quick. Brilliant. And is that, so that's a large saucepan? Just a large sauce, mm -hmm. uh, non-stick pan. Okay. Good, good. 
Right? So as you see, like oil will always like double whenever it's uh, heated. That's how I can tell it's coming up the temperature well, and you'll see it starting to smoke. So that's another wee idea there. And I just, well, so somebody asked Lucy, so so no harm if it's a bit overcooked? If it's a bit overcooked, it, no, there's no harm. As I say, it, it, it'll should be fine. It'll be like a well done steak, but I be more pleasant. So yeah. that's why I would say less is more, but it, it'll be totally fine. And Randy said, I've had do, those steaks before. <laughs> those steaks? Yeah. Not nice. No. Most definitely not. So listen guys, as I say, your sodium level is up to you. If you want less stock, if you want less stock, use less stock because you're gonna be seasoning it with salt and pepper. So the first time you make them, you go, oh, that's a bit salty for me, less salt. Don't season it as much or less stock or even less soy sauce, totally up to you. So I just give it a wee season with pepper, salt, oh. Sorry, I'm just going to go up here and get some pepper. Okay, and um, Dawn has asked, does it have to be a non-stick pan? I usually prefer cast iron. Cast iron is totally fine. I totally know what you mean. Great. But uh, as I say, so both sides with salt and pepper, the oil's starting to smoke. Don't want it too high because remember, saitan is a flour. It burns quicker. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to burn them. As I say, if, you're, if it's a steak, more car caramelization is better, but that's not what we're about here. And both sides were salt and pepper as MSF. It's okay. all about the, the seasoning. Seasoning flavour. Exactly. <laughs> so I that's what you want that. there. You want it smoking, but not searing smoke, okay? And then you want to sizzle. That's what you want. You want it to sizzle when it goes under the pan. Brilliant. So you could, if we were doing all four, we could fit all four in at the, the same time. Yeah, all four. So this is just some I made mm -hmm. earlier. And it's just some I had a say, to be honest with you. And that's it there. So whenever you see that there, get probably about one to two minutes each side. So because this is cold, I'm going to take a wee bit more time cooking it. But if you have it just coming off the steam, it takes, you don't need to worry about that. Yeah. As where I have this on where it's high. Oh. So as you can see, the caramelization is, is starting already. Wee bit of excess oil in there, guys, but you're not going to be having all that. And as I say, so caramelization is what you want because that's where the flavor is. Is Ryan Kim's husband? He's always like, "Hey, when you do that, there, mm -hmm. he says when the darkness is on it, he's like, oh my god, it's like an actual steak, and he just falls." Yeah, your, steak, your steaks are legendary. Thank you. Well, so, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, um, yeah. If we were doing this in real time, would we have taken the steaks? straight from the, pa the, the pan, mm -hmm. straight into there? Yeah, yeah. we'll, we'll let the let steam come off because it's quite okay. dangerous because water and oil never mixes. Yes. So you be careful. So this is probably about halfway okay. now. Just look in there. So Alexa, set a timer for 12 minutes. The joys of the future. Eh? Yeah. So I'll show you this right now. So just watching this, I don't want to burn this on you guys. I'm taking that off just to show you this. So I'm just turning the steak halfway. And see where you see where that's that's quite doughy. You see what I mean? It's actually quite doughy. That's not what you want, so that's going to take a little bit longer. So is that so at halfway? If it's still a bit doughy. Is that a sign to leave it for longer? No, no, than well, halfway. Plan? It's only half cooked yeah. anyway, so it's got another process, okay. half of the process to go there. Yeah. So it is going to take another move. Okay. And as I say, so this is basting, guys. So just a sprig of rosemary, this is just extra flavour. Then a sprig of thyme. Half clove of garlic and about a teaspoon of vegan butter. Any preferred brand that you use? Uh, you see, I can't remember the exact name of the vegan butter that I use, but as I say, the rosemary and thyme, you'd have that in your back garden. Is it in the fridge? Yes. Ever. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the black container, Laura. Yeah. So this is called basting. So basically, you're just giving the steak a wee bit more flavour. And this is, because this is cold in the middle, this is me turning it down just a little. And then you're just basting the steak as you would a normal piece of meat. And you want the foam because you want, it's called burn rosette, and it's called, that's basically uh, burnt butter. Okay. So it, like brown nut butter, sorry, is the correct term. Brown up butter, when you get the brown out of the butter, it basically just gives it that nutty umami flavour and it's perfect for a steak. It looks so good, that is the, the brand of butter. 
that Lee has used, naturally organic vegan spreadable. Mm -hmm. Great say, so yeah. that rosemary and that thyme will just permeate and the garlic will just permeate over that steak. And if you've got potatoes on or vegetables, as you'll be on with that. See that, guys? Just, oh, sorry. Oh, it smells amazing. Just leave that sitting there. Okay. That's fine. So if you're serving dinner to you, or your husband, your kids, serve the rest of your dinner up and just leave that sitting. That's fine, just as long as the pan isn't too hot. So basically the next process, you're, you're plating up all your things for you and your husband or your, whoever you're on a diet with, and you're setting the ring down, and then steak last minute. How many minutes was that roughly when that was I would say about five minutes. Yeah. Each side, one to two minutes on each side. Once you add the butter, mm -hmm. you don't want a high heat when you add the butter, you just want a medium to low heat, yeah. because then you burn, burn the butter, okay. and it's never nice. That's yeah. really, you want burn those up, it's brown, not butter. Okay. And that's it done. That's it. Oh my gosh. So, how easy is that? Right? That's so amazing. Yeah. So Lucy's saying, wow, I love rosemary. This is making me very hungry. I wish you could smell it. <laughs> Free. Is it good, Maya? Yeah, it's so much. amazing. As I say, just get, you don't have to use that. That's just, that gives your steak the next level of mm -hmm. flavor. Mm -hmm. So basically what I'm doing now, because you guys are going to eat it, is yeah. I'm just... And this is the thing again, people, you know, think, Eating vegan, it's so boring. <laughs> and you know, it's boring because just, you, you make it boring. Yeah, it's so and, you know, it can't be like this delicious, seasons, mm -hmm. beautiful food. And again, high protein, we're all about the high protein. Like mm -hmm. High protein vegan food is just amazing. And as I say, it's just adding those wee things at the end just gives it that wee bit more flavor. Mm -hmm. It's a bit like a roast potato. You add the rosemary and thyme, just brings it up a level. Could you add any sorts of spices and seasoning of, of your I don't want to say any because then people just add things called oh, paprika. Yeah. Yeah. Smoke <laughs> paprika. Oh, okay. Smoke paprika, Kim's favorite. You can add smoke paprika. Cumin is always mm -hmm. necessary for steak. Because it brings out the flavour. If you use cumin with steak, it enhances mm -hmm. steak. It enhances fla the, the flavour of the meat. Exactly the same thing we're saying. Yeah. Oh, good. I'll oh, ask you some more about we're letting that cool a little bit. So, somebody asked Ursula saying, Can I get that delivered? <laughs> yes, no worries. I think you're in America, Ursula. <laughs> Maybe a bit cold, but we'll make it happen. Said Lee as well to, <laughs> to cook it as well. Um, somebody had asked, Can this be frozen once cooked? Sorry if it's been addressed already. That's okay, no, no worries at all. So once it's cooked, let it cool completely because it's not safe. Well, I suppose it's not meat, so it's got a wee bit of difference, but you don't want to be putting it in the fridge warm and turning other stuff off. But as I say, once it's completely cold and went through the steaming process, I, you can freeze it, no problem at all. But don't do the second process. Okay. Don't, once you've turned it into the steak and you've, you've pan fried it, it's it just it would be dry and it wouldn't be nice and I don't want to give you something something that's oh, not okay. nice. That's really important. So we can do this process, then freeze, yes. but then it's like the cook to eat process. Cook to eat. Okay. Once you've done that, you don't really it's it'll become dry. Yeah. Nasty and like like uh like crusty and hard or any edges. That's good because I think I would have done all of it. I know to ask all the questions <laughs> of what I do wrong. Uh, so I've got some more questions from the infographic yesterday, so I'll fire some of them at you while we get ready to eat our steak. Um, mm -hmm. I would love to know if there's a way we can prepare our seitan so that it maintains a decent consistency if we freeze it. I'm so inconsistent with my eating, I really need to be able to prepare a week or two weeks worth, keep it in the freezer, I microwave it when I'm ready to eat, so mm. can you make it like that? When you microwave something, it's basically, if you're microwaving something from frozen, it's going to cook really quickly and shrivel. It's like anything you put something in the microwave too long, that's what happens. Microwaves are just not designed for that. It, this is just, you put a wee bit more time and understand that you've got a busy lifestyle and things like that. But as I say, some things are just best left out of the microwave. Yeah. Me being a chef, but there is some things you can cook in the microwave. There's no problem at all with them. But as I say, once you take them out of the freezer, lift them out that morning, let them thaw out, maybe they'll cook better in the microwave, but I, I just wouldn't recommend yeah. that. Yeah, I guess the solution, so you could, because a lot of, again, in our, our recipes, we're encouraging to like bulk cook or bulk prepare. Again, you could cook one or weeks, you know, one or two weeks worth to like this point, mm -hmm. freeze that, but then it only really took, what, four or five minutes to then yeah, actually cook it to eat, to be to eat. I know people like me, it's just to lift the heat and eat. Mm -hmm. But as I say, some things just can't be like that. You could probably, this is just me like thinking outside the box, you could cook it to this point 
and then you could shred it. Mm -hmm. And when you shred it, put it into wee pouches, defrost it, like naturally throughout the day at room temperature or fridge temperature, and then just heat it in the microwave. Maybe that'll help you, maybe that'll work. Yeah. How long would it keep? So say we did to the stage where we've got to now, where we have cooked it, how long would that keep in the fridge? Would you well, say? without the butter, the vegan butter, anything like that, when you're steaming it, when you have that in the fridge, three days, four days, as I say, there's nothing really scurry on it mm -hmm. that's going to make you sick if it's sitting too long, uh, but three, four days max. Three, four days, yeah. For freshness to use. Yeah, somebody's mm -hmm. asked for the recipes without soy, so example, we've got like the mushroom steak and Ultimate 12, mm -hmm. is the consistency the same? No, because the mushrooms have a wee bit more bite to them. Okay. And I found whenever I did that recipe too, uh, when you add lentils, lentils breaks the gluten down a wee bit more and makes it more of a meaty texture. But if you don't, it's like there's a, a chicken recipe that I have and it's just silken tofu, nutritional yeast, seasoning and vitamin gluten. It can be quite dense as where if you add just a simple, this is me just going off a month, like some butter beans or cannellini beans, mm -hmm. it just gives it a bit more texture. I've done a dinner for Kim last night and she really loved the flavour. Yeah. And that was me, I just used a wee bit more flavour, but then the texture was different with the pulses. Okay. And that's with the beans and yes. the beans and stuff. Yes, that looks so smooth. <laughs> I can't wait to eat it. Awesome. Um, we've already answered this, but I'll circle back to it again because this is one that comes up a lot. So Rosalind had asked, I don't see... I don't see how I could possibly could have overmixed my sight my sight hand has barely come together. I don't even know that I even needed it. It was like eating soft bubble gum. Can you talk about again the over just one more time, the over kneading, under kneading, over steaming? Less is more. The simple process that I've taught a lot of chefs, less is more sometimes. It's like simple flavours, things like that. Just don't overdo it in the, the Vitamixer. The thing too, if you don't have the Vitamixer and you're doing it on a bowl, it's hard to it's hard to judge a wee bit more because you're mixing it with a spoon, then you wait until it's combined, then the heat of everything, and then whenever you're adding it to the, the chatting board and you're working it out. So just less is more. If you think it's coming together too quick, just stop. Yeah. Just stop and just put it on the board and just cut it and then just play with it with your fingers and just pat it out a wee yeah. bit. Yeah, okay. I think we should try it. Yeah, that's <laughs> cool. Okay, so you can go ahead. Or... Yes. I've tried it many times. And um, from the last question that I said, Kim, it was a bit of a, a mumbled question, but Kim said it sounds like her seitan was undercooked, mm -hmm. not overworked. So it could have been from Sorry, the, the member said about the, like, the bubble gum kind of yeah. um, seitan. You've undercooked it. Undercooked, not overworked. So mm -hmm. would that be so say, so say again, I was cooking this for the first time, I've went and I've checked, checked my seitan. Again, if it's still that, Doughy texture, I need but to. Just leave it on, as I say, there's no harm in over, overdoing it. Yes. Overdoing it's better than underdoing it because nobody likes that. So, as I say, if it's over, it'll be no problem. So, even if the. This is like when we're, we're training and people stop at like the recommended rep range. <laughs> so, right. even if it comes to like the recommended cooking time, if, if I was to come to that and it's still doughy, then just to know it just needs a bit just longer. Just needs a bit longer. Yeah. Just a wee bit longer, won't do it any harm at all. Yeah. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try it. My I like to feed you. <laughs> it's your mouth. So, cut into it. So as you can see guys, that's not tough. That's... No, just slides through it. Yeah. But it's got like the crispiness on the top of it. Just, just like a stick. Mm -hmm. If you want more salt and pepper, no problem. That's so tasty. Yeah. And so, it's just even the size of the steaks that you get, so it's mm -hmm. so filling. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Should I try that? Ah, <laughs> 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 oh, so good. Thank you so much. Oh my God, that's really good. That's so you see, guys, this is just like... That's it. If you put beetroot powder, it will give you the effect of the, the blushing pinkness, but you don't really need it, as I said. It's, that's not doughy, it's not tough. It's perfect texture. Mm. Perfect texture. I'm so amazing. Mmm, that's so tasty. Do you think we'll be check on these? Yeah, we'll check on here. So, Alexa has a mind. I'll just... So there's still one minute on this, uh, as I say, so... I'm just going to read out, Kim has shared. Overworked makes it super tough and chewy, mm -hmm. undercooked makes it a bubble gum texture. So this is like what watching cooking show, it is okay. Yeah, yeah, well good, listen, it's still a wee bit under there, so probably need another five, ten minutes, five minutes at least. No, it's still, still a wee bit, still a wee bit under, but as I say, 
five minutes to seven minutes, ten minutes, that'll be perfectly yeah. that'll be perfectly fine. I think it's actually I think it's good for our members to see nearly what we don't want because it's it's good to see what we do want, but then the difference between what we don't want because the likes of myself, I don't know how to get to there, but this is like nearly on, on the way there. So again, I, I, it would be good. It's good now I know. Like keep cooking it. Keep cooking it. Just it that. won't do it any harm, guys. Even if it takes ten more minutes, it will be totally fine. Yeah. It's quite strange. It can be quite strange. Just depending on, <clears throat> excuse me, how much you worked it and stuff. But it will cook out completely. Just keep trying. And if it's bubble gummy, as you said, it's actually a good way to put it. Mm -hmm. If it is bubble gummy, just put it back on and it cook. Alexa, <laughs> stop. Oh, amazing. Jamie said my mouth is watering. <laughs> it's so good. I think we're done with it. That's so good. Perfect. Thank you so much, Lee. That just has been a, a recipe I do feel like I can make now. I am going to make it, so I'm going to chart my progress in the insiders and I will share um, the photos of my, my, my attempts and hopefully they will be pretty good. But like anything, I am prepared, but I might not get it right the first time. No. Then I'll come to Lee and ask him what I did wrong. Whenever I started here, I got it wrong a few times at the end of the day. Kim didn't get to see me do it wrong. Well, yeah. suppose she did try and it's like, oh, I didn't really like that one, but it did take me a wee while to get the knack of it. Now I've got the knack of it, there's been so much things I've made for yeah, these things. And like, it's just like our training programs or anything like this, you know, we don't, this is where I need to think, because again, a training program, I keep trying till I get it, and yeah, I'm cooking, yeah. and I'm like, oh. Yeah, well, it scares you. Yes. Trust me, second time after you do that, you'll be like, Lee, I've yeah. got this, don't, yeah. don't need you anymore. Yeah, no, totally. So honestly, guys, so I will share um, the ingredients, um, and also we'll do the, well, you've, you've got the method, but we'll share the recipe with you in the group, and please do try the recipe, um, share your photos, share your feedback in the group for this, um, with that, all the coaches, there's there's many coaches in the group to help you. I will be now a much more informed um, coach to help you through Saitan, as well as all of our other coaches have been cooking Saitan for a very, very long time, so we can help you with any tips that you need as well. I will just check if there's anything else. Never be saying thank you. Thank you so much to me and Laura. This is no great. Margaret said my Saitan definitely tastes like um, chewing gum, because <laughs> I think we've, we've solved that's an over, solved overcooking it. problem. Uh, over, for life. Sorry, overcooking well yes. solved. Yes, overcooking well so we want to go for that. Um, brilliant. So yes, guys, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, can't wait to see all your side hand prog progress. I will show Chef Lee and I also will share mine with you when I do it. But thank Enjoy, you very guys. much. Lee. No problem at all. Bye. Thank you.